Thank you for joining us today. Well, we are sad we aren't able to see everyone in person this year. We hope everyone and their families remain safe. I'm Tom Devine, SSI's North American Sales Manager, talking to you about aeration and its role in the wastewater treatment process. Just giving everyone a little background, SSI was established in 1995, headquartered in Poughkeepsie, New York. We also have a network of global offices around the world. SSI Aeration manufactures and designs systems for wastewater treatment. Our customers include a range of both municipal and industrial clients, and we have installations all over the globe. Our business has expanded, and we also offer process solutions and can provide equipment for each phase of the wastewater treatment process. What is a wastewater treatment plant? A wastewater treatment plant consists of multiple steps and processes that the influent passes through before it is discharged. In the primary treatment stage, wastewater moves through a series of screens, grinders, and grit chambers to remove solids, sand, and gravel from the raw sewage. Before moving into the aeration tanks, the material is allowed to settle, creating sludge that rests at the bottom of the tank. From here, the wastewater exits at the top of the tank and will move into the aeration tanks. We will go into the aeration tanks in more detail shortly, but this is where the wastewater receives most of its treatment. From the aeration tanks, the treated influent is then moved through filtration in a disinfectant stage before final discharge. Some plants may utilize one additional step called tertiary treatment to add additional oxygen into the discharge before it is released from the plant. Aeration. What is it and how does it work? Aeration is a vital part of the secondary treatment and activated sludge process in a wastewater treatment plant. In aeration tanks, oxygen is pushed into the diffusers, which have tiny slits on the surface that create bubbles when they come in contact with the water. The bubbles are used to feed microorganisms or bacteria in the tank oxygen. By feeding the bacteria in the tank, they can break down organic matter much faster than they would be able to without the additional oxygen. The bacteria is used to remove BOD or biochemical oxygen demand from the wastewater. Adding air to the tank also mixes the wastewater. By mixing the wastewater, any solids present in the tank are kept suspended, which prevents any excess sludge buildup. Why is it important to choose the right equipment for your plant? The aeration process of a wastewater treatment plant can consume up to 60% of the overall energy of the plant. Some factors to consider when designing your plant include budget, volume of wastewater that needs to be treated, plant location and climate, maintenance, composition of the wastewater and oxygen requirements as well as any local requirements for discharge influence. One important thing to think about is how often will the system be maintained? We have time to take it down and clean any floor sludge. Often plants cannot take down the system and sludge buildup is possible over time that can cover the diffusers. Increasing the air is not the best way to help this. Another option would be to install a retrievable system. These are grids that can be removed from the tank for the purpose of cleaning or replacing the membranes. Aeration equipment can be designed and shipped to the plant, pre-assembled, making the installation for the contractor a breeze and have the system set up and running in no time. There are many types of diffusers for aeration and mixing applications. Most aeration diffusers, particularly fine bubble diffusers, use membranes with small holes to disperse the oxygen into the tank. Coarse bubble diffusers, which produce large bubbles, are commonly used in mixing applications. The most common type of coarse bubble diffuser is the wideband coarse bubble made of stainless steel. Plastic versions, which have an integrated check valve, are also available. Manufacturers offer membranes and different materials suitable for a wide range of applications. Some manufacturers offer coated versions of the membranes with a PTFE blend on the surface or even include in the composition of the membrane itself. These membranes can help slow the rate of fouling and scaling and reduce overall energy consumption over time. By slowing the biological fouling of the diffusers, this also saves the plant in operating costs and the tanks don't have to be taken down as often for routine maintenance. Coatings to the membrane surface or upgraded membrane materials can extend the lifespan of the diffuser, helping to prevent the rate of creep or stretch in the membrane. If the membrane loses its shape and stretches out or becomes uneven, it will gradually become less efficient in operation and could lead to failure and compounding issues in the tank. 
Piping materials and the differences. Piping in an aeration system can be either PVC, CPVC, or stainless steel. This usually depends on a variety of things like water depth, temperature, and project location. It's important when designing the piping system and supports for the tank to consider other equipment in the tank. Other equipment in the tank, such as mixers, can create strong flows that can cause failure for weaker components such as plastic supports. In these cases, it may be required to use stronger materials such as stainless steel for supports. Allowing enough clearance between your aeration diffusers and mixers can also help minimize any negative impacts. Municipal plants treat wastewater from local sewers resulting from normal household and light commercial activity. Industrial wastewater originates from manufacturing and commercial businesses and often contains different compositions and chemicals compared to traditional municipal wastewater. Because industrial waste is more aggressive, often these plants need to consider more robust equipment. Industrial plants generally will see a shorter lifespan of the system compared to a municipal plant. Common industries that treat their own wastewater include food and beverage manufacturing, pulp and paper plants, oil refineries, and mining, to name a few. How can MBBR media be used in aeration? MBBR media can be added to the tank, allowing you to increase the number of microorganisms or bacteria within the tank. The media, which are floating plastic carriers, increase the surface area that the bacteria can attach to. Aeration is used in the tank to mix the media as well as provide oxygen for the bacteria. By increasing the effective surface area of the tank, you can reduce the footprint needed for the treatment as well as the hydraulic retention time or overall time needed in the secondary phase. In addition to removing BOD, additional tanks can be added to further treat the wastewater with media. In a multiple tank arrangement, the first tank filled with the media will remove about 80% of the BOD. In the second tank, the bacteria will work at removing some of the harder BOD not removed in the first phase. The third tank can be used to remove nitrogen from the wastewater. Thank you for joining us today for this brief overview on aeration for wastewater treatment. If you have any other questions or want to discuss more in depth, please feel free to reach out. We hope to see everyone at WebTech 2021.